What's an interesting Airbnb experience you've had recently? It's uh, crabbing under the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, I, I was so like confident about it, like because my hometown is uh, close to sea. So although I have never done crabbing before, but like I was so confident, I invited my wife and two of my friends to go there, and I also crabbed the like first one. I was so happy, and I was posing and grabbing the crab in my hand. I got bit by the crab a little bit. Yeah. What kinds of projects do you work on at Airbnb? Yeah, I work on、uh, search ranking and recommendation systems in Airbnb, and it's not Airbnb homes. So I'm working on Airbnb experiences. It's a startup inside Airbnb. So we try to recommend the, the local tours and unique activities, like for people who travel. So you not only know like where to live on Airbnb, you also know what to do in Airbnb. How is it different to do data science for Airbnb experiences versus Airbnb homes? Yeah, for Airbnb experiences, it's more、uh, more a startup environment. So,、uh, for example, through Airbnb, one very important feature for us is the quality of our like、uh, listing images. And for Airbnb homes, we can categorize the images into different、uh, like、uh, genres. Like,、uh, for example, we have、uh, bedroom pictures, bathroom pictures. Then it is、uh, relatively easier for、uh, like、uh, data scientists, machine learning engineers to like evaluate such images because like then we have a data set of、uh, similar images. But for Airbnb experiences, we have、uh, like all kinds of experiences, like a cooking class, like a crabbing under the Golden Gate Bridge, like it's all very different. And、uh, then how can you use a machine learning model? To classify the image quality of、uh, like a data set of a very high variety. What are some of the approaches you're taking to mitigate that? Instead of、uh, trying to find the data set, label the data set, so we rely on user behaviors to help us find the high quality images. How do you use causal inference to make recommendations on Airbnb experiences? In Airbnb, so one、uh, very important signals we use is user clicks. So we assume like if users click on something, they are interested in something. But in the real, like in real applications, that's very difficult to use. It's a little difficult to use clicks, because users will click on something like for different reasons. Sometimes users click on it because it's like really interesting. Sometimes users just、uh, assume like the top ranked items are the best are the best results. They just trust you. And so, in order to solve、uh, some problem like this, we use causal inference、uh, to help、uh, decompose clicks into like different、uh, types. We try to use causal inference to help us discover the high intent clicks to help improve our、uh, recommendation methods. What are some of the applications of machine learning that interest you? I'm interested in a lot of、uh, applications, like for search ranking, recommender system. Definitely, like、uh, I'm really interested in them. And actually, these problems are really old problems. Like,、uh, for example, recommender system is like too old. I don't even remember like when it started. But for search ranking, it was really popular in 2012, 2011. But now the problem is there are still many like unsolved problems in this area. For example, in back in、uh, like ten years ago, everyone started with a, a well-defined data set, well-defined objective when they started working on ranking problems. But now, like we are facing more and more problems, like、uh, how do we optimize and what do we optimize when we don't have enough data, when we don't have like、uh, reliable labels, trustworthy labels? Yeah, I'm really interested in, in these like、uh, old applications. You've got some interesting patents in the space.、Um, what are some of the solutions you've built so far? And the most recent one, I think, most interesting is、uh, based on my PhD thesis. It's about、uh, fake news detection in social media, and、uh, we. Try to like uh, also uh, build uh, uh, accurate models with、uh, noisy data and inaccurate labels. And the applications are like、uh, fake news detection and the rumor detection. And the one interesting thing is、uh, we started working on fake news detection back in 2014. So at that time, nobody knows like what's misinformation, what's rumor. Why do you work on this? And after 2016, because of the presidential election. And everyone knows. Ah, this is a big problem. Fake news. 
Now, like everyone talks about fake news. The problem of fake news detection is we are not trying to detect something that's uh, organic or natural because fake news is generated by these uh, malicious spreaders, malicious editors. So whenever, like uh, whatever model you have, they can easily just edit their content to, to make it uh, like uh, less detectable. So for example, if uh, it's a text-based uh, classification model, they just manipulate the content to make it uh, look more similar to real news. And if it's an image-based method, they just uh, Photoshop the, the picture. Now, like, uh, based on deep fake, they can even like, uh, manipulate the video of the content. And then how do we detect the problem? So what, do, what we did is, uh, uh, instead of the content, we focus on the propagation of fake news. And we see how like, a piece of message spreads in social media from one group to another group. Then the, our method is based on the propagation path yeah, instead of the content itself. For my thesis work, and uh, we try to classify fake news based on how it propagates from one community to another community. So from one community to another community transfer, we call it a one step. So can you imagine like, uh, how many steps are key to us to classify a piece of news? It's three. So the first the three steps. So where it originates and uh, where it goes to next and the next. That's the most uh, like informative steps for us to, for the, to do the classification. And uh, ultimately, all these popular news, their propagation paths will converge. So fake news and real news, people just re like, uh, it just uh, propagates in the same way. If we have a piece of real news and fake news, the first three steps are very different. But after they are viral, they will be propagated to the same, com to similar communities. Like everyone will know it. So people are not very immune to the spread of fake news. The first step is the, like a, where it originates, like from which community this piece of fake news like a, started spreading. And then the uh, second and third are the like a, top two, the first two communities that fake news propagates to. So these three steps, these three first communities that help propagate the fake news, like are the key features for us to classify a piece of news. So it means like uh, real news are usually propagated, uh, are usually initiated in very different communities on social networks. Are there any emerging trends in machine learning that you find interesting? I think it's causal inference. I think still the most popular technique now is still like a deep learning. And people try to build layers and layers of uh, neural networks. But uh, deep learning has many problems. For example, it cannot be uh, like uh, clearly explained. And it's like a black box. You use a lot of data to build all these neurons, but you don't know what's really working inside. And, and I think like in the future, we will need to integrate a causal inference to make us understand more about like uh, why does the, the machine learning algorithm, deep learning algorithm build this neuron here. Yeah, I think it will be helpful for us, for example, to migrate one solution, like uh, transfer one solution to another area. Also, it will be helpful for us to like uh, ultimately extend the performance, the limits of deep learning models.